Hello friends, this video on Human Health and Diseases Part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have discussed about some of the deadly diseases like AIDS and cancer and we also spoke about many other infectious diseases, we will now talk about something very important. We are going to talk about drugs and alcohol abuse. Why are we talking about this is these often serve as one of the major cause that can actually influence people to so even before we talk or we start discussing about drugs, let us try to understand what is a drug. So drug is nothing but a substance which when introduced into the body produces a physiological effect. Now what do we mean by physiological effect? So it is, uh, you can say it is a kind of medicine. Now you would have seen that there are so many medicines which are prescribed to us when we fall ill. For example, if you are having some bacterial infection, you are given antibiotics. If you are having some sort of inflammation, you are given anti-inflammatory. If somebody who is not getting proper sleep, they are given sleeping pills. Now what happens is if any of these medicines, not all of them, some of these medicines have certain properties like hallucinogenic properties because of which if you take too many medicines or if you start taking these medicines regularly that will have an impact on your uh, central nervous system that is that will have an impact on your brain so the way you perceive things that will start changing the, your body will start functioning at a very slow rate you will actually you will actually do not feel the stress and you will not be able to overcome the, you will not be required to overcome the stress rather. And that is why people get addicted to drugs. So when you talk about a drug, it is actually a medicine. So, but when that medicine is not taken as per the prescription or if that is taken in excessive amounts or a, on a regular interval of time, in that case, it can cause addiction. Now some of the commonly used drugs are obtained from the flowering plants and some of them are opioids, cannabinoids and cocaine. So these are some of the very commonly used drugs. So let us quickly have a look at each of them that how are they uh, extracted from plant and what are their side effects and how what kind of impact do they have on the human body. So let us start with opioids. So these are actually pain relievers. Now you would have seen that sometimes you have a pain maybe in your hand or sometimes you have headache. So what do you do? You take painkillers or pain relievers, whatever you call them. So what happens with these pain relievers? They reduce the intensity of pain. Now, how do they reduce the intensity of pain? In fact, you would have seen that when some surgical operation is performed, uh, when a surgery is performed, obviously when a part of your body is getting stitched and cut and so many things are happening, obviously you are supposed to have a lot of pain post-surgery. But what happens? The doctors give you painkillers. Now, when you take the painkillers, what happens? The pain will still be there. But what changes is that the that area of your brain which actually gives you the perception of pain, which gives you the feeling of pain, some changes take place in that portion of the brain. As a result, the brain do not help you, the, the, the brain does not allow you to perceive the pain. So that's how it happens. So these pain relievers, however, can have an adverse effects if they are taken in an incorrect way. Now, some of the examples of opioids are morphine, oxycodone, hydrocodone, and each of them have uh, different properties and therefore different uses. If you talk about hydrocodone, these hydrocodones are often related. I mean, often they are prescribed by doctors for injury related pain or for dental related pain like somebody is having pain in the teeth and some surgery or something has to happen there so for that purpose sometimes it, it is given as a painkiller if you talk about morphine it is used for severe pain for example before and after surgical procedure which i was talking about just now so in those scenarios morphine is recommended now the question is how these 
okay. Now, what are these? Morphine, oxycodone, hydrocodone, they are all different classes of opioids. They are all chemical compounds. Now, how these chemical substances um, control the central nervous system or how do they control the brain? Now, there are certain receptors which are found in brain, spinal cord and gastrointestinal tract. So, in these parts of the body, certain receptors are formed and these opioids attach to those receptors. So, they are the receptors which are specific to these opioids. Now, once the opioids attach to the receptors, it reduces the perception of pain. So even though the, your stitch or your uh, body remains the same, but you are not able to feel the pain. That is the only difference. And that is why they are called painkillers or pain relievers. So these opioids attach to proteins and these proteins are called opioid receptors and they are pre present in different parts of the body like brain, spinal cord and gastrointestinal tract. So these are some of the parts of the body where the opioid receptors are present. Now if the opioids are taken as prescribed by the doctor then everything goes fine because they actually are very effective as pain relievers. But if a very heavy dose is taken or if uh, it is taken regularly in that case it can cause severe problems like it can cause severe respiration depression that is the respiration rate might de decrease a lot it can even cause death because if the rate of respiration decreases too much it can cause death so regular and frequent use of opioids can cause addiction so it produces sleepiness, nausea, mental confusion. So these are some of the immediate effects of intake of opioids. And that is why people feel like taking it. Now those who are addicted to opioids, why do they take it? Because whenever they take it, they get a feeling of sleepiness. So they feel uh, lazy. They don't have to do anything. They don't get any sort of thoughts in their mind. So normally who takes, I mean, who gets addicted to these kind of drugs? People who do not want to uh, overcome or who do not want to face the truth. For example, there are many people who, uh, who cannot overcome, who cannot face failures. That is wrong, of course, because failures are part of life. You learn from failures and that is how you succeed. But there are many people who are not able to face failures. They do not want to face the challenges of life. So they just want to spend the life simply doing nothing so for those kind of people they tend to get addicted to these kind of uh, things and that's how they they are just spending time they are not utilizing the time for something better so that was about opioids so regular frequent intake can lead to addiction and once there is addiction so it will become a need on a regular basis so the person will need it otherwise he will feel restless so some of the examples of opioids are one common, very common example is heroin. So heroin is a white, odorless, bitter, crystalline compound. So it is often uh, sold in powdered form. Now, how do people take in heroin? Some of them uh, just uh, inhale it, that powdery mixture is being inhaled. Whereas some of them even mix it in water and then uh, they take it. So chemically it is diacetyl morphine. So as you can see its chemical structure, this is how heroin looks like. That is diacetyl morphine. It is extracted from the latex of poppy plant. So what is latex? So latex is a milky fluid which comes out when a particular plant part is cut. So if you would have seen there, there are quite a few plants where if you cut their stems, you will see a milky fluid coming out of it. So for this poppy plant also there is uh, this milky fluid coming out of it and from that milky fluid heroin is extracted. Heroin acts as a depressant and slows down body functions. Now when the body function slows down the person doesn't feel energetic, he just lies down, he feels lazy, he, there is a sleepiness or drowsiness and that's what he enjoys because that is how he wants things to be. So this is an example of opioid. Let us talk about cannabinoids. So these are again chemicals which are obtained from cannabis plants. So it is named after that and that is why it is called cannabinoids. Now there are different parts of this plant like flowers, leaves and resins from which uh, 
these uh, cannabinoids are obtained. In fact, the various combinations produce various cannabinoids, like from flowers, leaves, resins, you can combine them with each other and then you can get different types of cannabinoids. So what do these chemicals do? They also attach to receptors which are mainly present in the brain. Now once they are attached to the receptors, they affect that part of the brain which is involved in regulating many physiological processes. For example, appetite, pain, mood, memory, etc. So all those uh, feelings get controlled by this cannabinoids. So this is how the structure of cannabinoid looks like. So they have adverse effects on the cardiovascular system of the body. So regular, for all the drugs, it is true that their regular intake will cause addiction and also regular intake will have long-term effects on the body. So these cannabinoids can adversely affect the cardiovascular system. So it can lead to heart diseases on the long run. Some examples of cannabinoids are marijuana, hashish, Charas, ganja, these are all examples of cannabinoids. As I said, different parts of the cannabis plant, for example, the flower, the resins, the leaves. So if you mix them in different combinations, you get these different cannabinoids. And all of them are uh, like drugs. They, they can cause addiction and they adversely affect your body. Let us look at a third type of drug that is cocaine. So cocaine is an alkaloid which is obtained from the leaves of cocoa plant. So cocoa plant is the same plant from which coffee also is extracted. So from the same plant, this alkaloid called cocaine can also be extracted. This it can be inhaled in its powdered form or it can be dissolved in water and then injected into the bloodstream. So in the form of injections also it is taken. Now when you talk about these injections, now when people, uh, when the drug addicts, they look for these injections. So sometimes they are not much bothered about if the injections or the needles are the disposable needles or not. And these are the ways by which AIDS also get transmitted. So cocaine is a very strong CNS stimulant. CNS is central nervous system. So it stimulates the central nervous system. That is, it activates the central nervous system. How does it activate the central nervous system? By increasing the level of a neurotransmitter called dopamine. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter. And what does cocaine do? Cocaine increases the level of dopamine. Now, when the level of dopamine increases, what happens? the movement activities also increases so the person becomes extra energetic so that is why often it is misused by the sports persons and the athletes because they want to gain some extra energy and then for that purpose they take cocaine but this cocaine has adverse effect on the body because prolonged use can cause many adverse effects that is it can increase the temperature of the body, it can increase the heart rate, it can cause BP problems, headache, nausea, decreased appetite, weight loss. So that it can cause quite a few problems. So it causes euphoria, energy, talkativeness and hallucination effects. So you see mainly because of this energy part, it is misused by the sports person. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.